and these are all the books that I read in August. I read 23 books in August. I read two classics, one fantasy, three nonfiction. I read five graphic novels, three children's chapter books, and nine children's picture books. So as always, we are first going to dive in to the classics. I finished reading Les Mis by Victor Hugo, and I really enjoyed it. I did an entirely separate video review of that, which I will link up above and down below so you can go over and check out all my thoughts about Les Mis. I also read a book from the Aunt Jane's Nieces series by Edith Van Dyne, which is a pseudonym for L. Frank Baum, who wrote the Wizard of Oz series. I read Aunt Jane's Nieces on Vacation, which is the seventh book in the series. The girls are on vacation in the countryside at their old farmhouse, of course, with Uncle John along. They hear someone in the village complaining that there is no newspaper, so they decide to start printing a paper of their own. Uncle John buys a printing press and the girls do all of the journalism. They charge one penny for each paper, but they are steadily losing money because of all the expenses. I really loved this funny story. You would think that being set in the countryside, it would be kind of a peaceful, almost a boring plot line. But there is plenty of action and mystery. I just love the charming writing style and the funny situations <laughs> that all the nieces find themselves in. I read this entire book in one sitting. It was just so enjoyable, I couldn't put it down. And I gave it four stars. I also read the 19th book in the Redwall series, Eulalia. Gorath the Badger is captured by evil pirates. And Maudie the Hare is sent from Salamandrastron to find him. Orquil is a mischievous young hedgehog, and he has actually been cast out of Redwall for stealing. So these three unlikely heroes team up to battle off the evil hordes and to save Redwall Abbey. This book just has everything that I love about the Redwall series. It is an absolute delight. I was just laughing and giggling at Maudie, the hare, and all of her banter with the shrews and otters. The action and the pacing are fantastic. There's always something going on. The plot is always moving forward. But there are also some really lovely scenes that show our characters resting, grieving together, or laughing together that brings this emotional pull into the story. I just adore Redwall, and I gave this one five stars. I also reread for the, I don't know, sixth or seventh time, Stuart Little by E.B. White. I really love Stuart's story, and every time that I reread it, it just, I don't know, the nostalgia is there, and it just feels like coming home. There's just something so whimsical about this story, and little Stuart. He's a tiny little mouse going on adventures. There is always something hilarious happening. And I especially love the story about Stuart sailing a little ship on the pond in Central Park. I really like that Stuart is dreamy and intelligent, but he's also very brave and resourceful. He doesn't always make the best decisions, but he does have excellent manners. However, there are a lot of things in different plot lines that are just kind of left open-ended or it's just never really explained. And that adds to the whimsy of it, but I'm a person that likes to have things explained. So you just kind of have to accept that the story is what it is, and there are some things that are just kind of left up to your imagination, and you just have to be okay with that. Despite the slightly chaotic plot lines at times, this is just such an imaginative and fun story. I always love it, and I always give it five stars. I also finally sat down and read Kiki's Delivery Service. I've also done a separate video of all my thoughts about the Studio Ghibli film and how that compares to the book and all of my ideas about Kiki in a separate video, which I will link up above and down below. So go on over there and hear all of my in-depth thoughts about how much I love Kiki. <laughs> I read Wolf Walker's The Graphic Novel. So apparently I think this was first a movie and then it was adapted into a graphic novel. I've never seen the movie, but now I really want to. Robin Goodfellow is the daughter of a wolf hunter and Robin sneaks into the woods armed with her trusty crossbow and her faithful hawk Merlin. Robin wants to help her father and try to kill a few wolves of her own until she meets the wolf girl. She is a mystical wolf walker who, when she falls asleep, turns into a wolf, but when she's awake, 
then she's a human. The two girls begin an unlikely friendship, and Robin must choose to either save her father or her new wolf walker friend. I just loved the magic and the mystical legends in this book. I loved Robin's character. She's really intelligent and fierce and brave. I really loved the affectionate relationship she has with her father. It was very sweet. I loved the beautiful artwork all the way through the book. Just these delicate lines and these crisp, cool colors. It's just so beautiful and imaginative and I gave it four stars. I got Pigs Might Fly from my library. Lily is the daughter of a famous inventor in the Pigdom Plains. She dreams of inventing her own flying machine. When a mysterious squadron of attack flyers begin to harass the countryside, Lily scrambles to finish her prototype of an airplane and she takes to the skies to protect her neighbors. But if her father finds out what she has done, then Lily is going to be in big trouble. I just loved this graphic novel. Lily is so spunky and smart. I was just cheering for her through the entire book. And I loved how seeing how she interacts with her father and her aunt and her cousin. There's these really strong family dynamics, a lot of different personalities. And I really loved the depth of the world building in this pig kingdom. There's history and religion and behavioral norms and like culture, music, cuisine, politics. I mean, just all these elements for a very vibrant culture unique to these pigs. And as if that wasn't enough, then Lily goes traveling and we get a glimpse of another culture. So the boars and warthogs outside of Pigland have their own religion, their own history, their own legends. But all of this world building information was so seamlessly woven into the story. There was no, there was no point at all where there was like an info dump of cultural things. It's just all woven in so perfectly making it this really interesting and exciting experience. I really I really loved the artwork, the character designs, the plot was exciting and full of action. I just loved everything about this book. It was so fun and I gave it four stars. I also read volume nine of Silver Spoon. I am enjoying the Silver Spoon series a lot. In this volume, Hachiken is helping a fellow classmate to study and is tutoring them so that they can raise their grades to get into the college that they want. However, in order to help them study, Hachiken needs to borrow his brother's old study notes, but those notes are back at their old home, their old parents' home in the city. So Hachiken tries to get up the courage to go home and face his parents. I just love each volume more and more as we get more of an in-depth look into Hachiken's past and his relationship with his family. And we see Hachiken and his friends with stronger and stronger emotional connections. They really, really help each other out, you know, and they get into some crazy situations. I gave this volume four stars. I actually DNF'd Robot Jesus and three other Jesuses you never knew. This book examines the person of Jesus and what various cults and religions around the world think about him and say who he is. Some people believe that Jesus is just another angel or that he was just a human prophet. But this author presents the true Jesus and debunks a lot of false beliefs that Jesus was not really God. The chapters are designed to equip the reader with knowledge about what different cults believe and how to talk with people and answer their questions about the true nature of the Trinity and the person of Jesus Christ. I DNF'd it at 41% of the way through. The premise of the book is really good, but the execution just wasn't quite what I was looking for. As far as I could tell, the theology in here is sound and correct, and it's rooted in canonical scripture. However, some of the arguments weren't quite as strong or as logical as I was looking for. I felt like the author was taking some leaps to kind of connect different ideas, and it was like that doesn't, what? <laughs> that doesn't really fit. You're kind of grasping at straws to prove your point there. The conclusion that he would reach was the correct conclusion, but his logic sometimes had flaws in it in the way that he tried to prove that that was the correct thing. Maybe I'm just being too picky. I don't know. I, I felt like the author also kind of ex took too long explaining these details that weren't really that important. And he just went off on these rabbit trails that weren't that meaningful to the main message. 
The writing could have been condensed. This book is fine, it's good, but it's just kind of not what I was looking for, so I ended up giving it three stars. All of the following books in this video were sent to me from a publisher for a free and honest review. I read Egg Marks the Spot, which is the second book in the Skunk and Badger series by Amy Timberlake. I adore Skunk and Badger. They remind me a lot of kind of just the whimsy and the imagination of this animal world like you would have in Wind of the Willows. So of course, I was super excited to read the second book and it did not disappoint. Skunk and Badger are just so funny and adorable. I really love the warmth of their friendship and how they laugh together. In this second book, their friendship is put to the test and they really have to prove their loyalty. I just can't wait to read more from the Skunk and Badger series. I mean, this these books just make me happy. <laughs> I gave the second book four stars. I also read Avery. Avery has a fairly high level on Ranked, the app that determines your social standing. But her best friend Zoe has one of the lowest rankings in school. And that means that she can't get into certain restaurants, she can't ride on certain city buses. Everything about these people's lives are dictated by their rank. From where they can live to where they can work or travel. But then when Avery's ranking suddenly drops, the true friends are on a quest to find out why and to try to restore Avery's rank. But of course the ranked app is controlled by an evil corporation with even more nefarious plans in store. I just love this graphic novel so much. The world building is really cool with the rankings and everything. The adventure is exciting. I liked the mystery surrounding the evil corporation. And I loved the crazy friendship between Avery and Zoe. They bicker a little and they tease each other. And <laughs> However, they are tried and true friends. I just love the dynamic between them. Zoe is like super fierce and sassy. And then Avery is more cautious and a little bit quieter. So they make a really good team. The artwork is like really intense and brightly colored. It's just kind of right in your face, but it draws you into the action of the story. And I gave this one four stars. I also read Wallach. The Great Journey. Wallach is a young polar bear who treks through the frozen tundra with an older bear named Eskimo. They run across humans from time to time and they have some adventures hunting for seals. They meet a ferocious mama polar bear with her two cubs. I just really loved this. The artwork is so beautiful. It has all the mystery and the allure of the North Pole. The story is exciting and it balances both serious subjects and really funny and hilarious scenes. And I liked the depth of the themes and the history in this book. This one was such a fun read and I gave it four stars. I read Take Me Outdoors, A Natural Journal for Young Explorers. This is the perfect journal to record your experiences camping or hiking or, or, or anything in the great outdoors. It really encourages you to notice things and the activities are really relaxing, really thoughtful. It kind of forces you to consider a different perspective and really see things in a fresh way. I loved all the cool illustrations and there are these little boxes at the bottom of some of the pages with little history tidbits. There are a few little one paragraph bios about people like Beatrix Potter and Nellie Bly who traveled the world. And I loved reading all these little factoids about birds and trees and national parks. This will be the perfect gift for a kid going on vacation. And I gave it five stars. I also read the stories of musical instruments. So as a musician myself, I, when I got my degree in music, I had to take various classes for different musical instruments. So a lot of the instruments in here, I'm actually able to play. So it was kind of interesting to go through and just see the history of how different instruments were developed and different famous composers who wrote for those instruments. And my favorite part, of course, was the development of the piano because I'm a pianist. There are chapters about beautiful instruments from all over the world. And I really liked the cute illustration in this book. It just kind of brings it all to life. I gave this book four stars. And I also read nine picture books. I read Hugo No Puede Dormir, Hugo Can't Sleep, Run Little Chasky, An Incan Trail Adventure, Where's Baby Elephant, A Season of Flowers, How It Works, Rocket, Learning About the Garden with Sleeping Beauty, Discovering the Underground with Snow White, whole whale, and Princess Naomi helps a unicorn. So those are all the books that I read in August. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know what was one of your favorite books that you read in August. 
Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and remember the right book in the right hands at the right time can change the world.